We do. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Drewcast, episode 126. I'm your host, Melo15. Got another uh, got another pod, kinda kinda doing solo this week again. Uh last week, guys, the 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 response to the back to the past segment was kinda crazy, dude. Uh, I didn't really think I didn't really think it would catch on that good. I mean, I kind of did because I'm not used to like being more personal and open on the podcast. So I was kind of like, damn, I wonder how people are going to react to this week. But and my aunt Brooke, you killed it in the comment section. So shout out to you, you know, but we're going to actually bring back that segment. We got volume two this week. Uh, so for back to the past, I want to I want to talk about it might be a little sad at first, but the overall message will become clear once I tell the story. Yeah, last week was my cousin Steven's birthday. He is he's passed away. Um, the reason it's kind of hard for me to talk about this one because, you know, that was kind of like a huge event in a lot of our lives. It was a huge, uh, you know, the new term is called canon event, but for a lot of us, that was a huge turning point in our life, uh, for me and my, and for uh, all my other cousins and, you know, aunts and uncles, you know, that when I was in high school, I remember coming home from football practice one day and it wasn't actually, so no, it was the morning. I was waking up to get ready to go to football practice. It was something to do with football because I think I had a game later that night, yeah. And um, I remember getting up for school and my mom had told me that, you know, our cousin Steven had been murdered. And I, I didn't really believe it. You know, I, I, I remember that morning. I remember it very vividly right now as we're talking. I remember, you know, telling my mom, like, nah, come on, that's not true, right? Like, telling me that, like, it's, it's, I was like, please tell me that, like, it's not real, right? It, it ended up, obviously, being real. And I think to this day, they never found out who killed my cousin Steven, which, you know, that that's a whole nother story altogether, but... I remember it lingering with me for a while because he, him and my cousin James, right? So I have a cousin named James who he's actually like the reason I'm able to do Spotify and Apple podcast and, you know, put my podcast out onto the audio platforms. I think I've mentioned that before, but if you're new to the channel, my cousin James is the reason I'm able to do that. And I, so Steven and James, they are the reasons why the saying, you know, that when people tell you blood stick in the water, it's not. And they're the reasons why in my life, they're the reasons why that saying doesn't mean shit. You know, those those two have been more of real cousins to me than my actual real cousins. And that's and if they get offended by that, then that's you. But that's just how my experience is. James is like my older brother, but he's shown me more love and more family loyalty than people in my actual fucking family. So, you know, I mean, it's funny because like when you say stuff like that, like, oh, you know, you've been more family than my actual family. The people who fuck you over your entire life get like hella mad. It's like, well, don't get mad. Start treating me better. And maybe I wouldn't have to say those type of things. The point of this whole story is when he when he was murdered, I was like, that was like the one of the very first times that like death showed me that it was real right we've all had that moment right where we're like hey death is like you only hear about it in movies and for some people it's like straight away when they're born right they they experience a lot of like really horrible shit but for me when my cousin steven died that was the first time that death had shown me it was real right it wasn't a joke like my cousin was gone somebody that i looked up to someone that you know, when he, his first Slurpee from 7-Eleven, you guys know the Slurpees. I took him to get one one time and he had told me that was his first Slurpee ever. And that just blew me away. I remember like when we we're drinking the Slurpees on the way home, I remember looking at my cousin like, damn, that's your first Slurpee ever. And he claimed that was his first Slurpee ever. And like, that was mind blowing to me. Like those moments will live on forever, right? It's those moments when he had came up to visit us when we lived in Des Moines and I was in high school still. And there was like a group of kids throughout the neighborhood who would like, you know, bully us and like try to pick on us and, you know, just like normal kid stuff. And I remember my cousin Steven came up and he checked all of them, bro. 
he like put them in check. He was like, hey, don't talk to my cousins like that. I'll, and he was like fighting them, bro. Like for real, like out in the backyard. He had just gotten there like 20 minutes prior. He's out in the backyard scrapping with people and squaring up with people over us. You know, and I remember thinking to myself like, damn, bro, this guy doesn't owe us that. He's not even my blood related family, but this guy treated me like I was his family. Same with James. They both treated us like we were their little brothers, like we were family, you know, which is kind of why when I started the Wolf Pack, I know a lot of people might know this already, but when I started the Wolf Pack, I had that in mind, you know, to start a band of brothers who had each other's backs, regardless of blood, regardless of family ties. Like if I put you in my Wolf Pack, you and my brother for life, bro. That's kind of the inspiration I gathered for that, you know, and then it all kind of finalized once the movie, um, the hangover came out, right? Cause they had a wolf pack in the movie. But for me, the, uh, the wolf pack kind of originated a little bit before the movie. I was already kind of thinking of that when, because of my cousin, Steven, right? So no, blood is not thicker than water. Blood is not thicker than water. A lot of people will tell you that. And it's because that is, I think it's a trap, bro. When people tell you blood is thick in the water, it's a trap. It's a trap to keep you stuck in like the toxic family that you were born into. And you can't really choose what family you're born into, but you could definitely choose the family that you end up with. And that's a hundred percent real, bro. You could definitely choose the family you end up with. And when people say blood is thick in the water, it's just a way to trap you, bro. In my opinion, it's just a way to keep you stuck being like, hey, you know, I want to get out of this family. It's toxic. You guys do a lot of bad shit, but we're family. You know, I used to be that way, bro. I used to be that way. This summer taught me a lot of shit about that saying that blood is blood is not thick of the water, bro. And, you know, since his birthday just passed, you know, Steven, bro, like you were one of the main people who showed me that family doesn't have to be blood, bro. You know, your your death was the first time I remember saying to myself, like, damn, that death, death is real. It's permanent. You know, there's a lot of people left on this planet that still love you and still think about you. And there there's not it sucks because there's nothing that like any of us could do to take the pain away that your mom probably feels, that your sisters feel, that your aunts and uncles and cousins that they all feel. Like there's nothing that could take that pain away. I mean, even if they found out the person who murdered you. If they found out who it was, does that really take the pain away? I mean, it gives some sort of closure for sure, but it doesn't take the actual pain of you dying. It doesn't take that pain away. And one of the biggest lessons I will ever learn in this life was because of you. And, you know, I cherish the moments that I shared with you. I cherish the moments that we had. I cherish the memories. We had good memories, bro. I remember when the song Forever came out on the radio, the song by Drake. And they were like, they didn't tell us, well, like when the song was playing, each feature that, that you know, like at first it went Drake, then it was Kanye, Lil Wayne, and Eminem. When the song first aired on the radio, it was like, okay, first feature, Drake. First feature, Lil Wayne. I was like, oh, and, uh, you know, sorry, second feature, Kanye. Third feature, Lil Wayne. It's like, oh, I wonder who's next. And right before Eminem came on, I remember my my cousin Steven had, had came into the, our room because he was coming to visit us. So we're like, hey, bro, come listen to this. The last verse is about to come on, and then Eminem starts rapping. And I remember my cousin Steven sitting with us, listening to this, the last verse by Eminem, and Eminem just smokes that song. That's one of my favorite memories ever, bro, because I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it, because it's like, hey, there's some moments that we shared, man, that, you know, there's a, and he was hella loyal too, bro. I remember there was girls from high school who would try to like, who would try to get with them that, that we all knew, and he'd be like, nah, bro, that's, you know, you dated my cousin before I'm good. And it's, it's like stuff like that, that I'll never forget. And the lesson here is, yeah, you know, uh, not everybody who says blood is thick in the water is, is trying to trap you. But the lesson here is that family isn't always blood related to you. The family that you choose, the family that resonates with you, the family that treats you good might not always be people who are blood related to you. And, you know, I had to learn that lesson very, very hard the last couple of years and going forward. You know, that it might look a little different than what I'm used to, but I'm okay with that. I'm ready to, I'm ready to embrace being 31 because I turn 31 next week. I'm ready to embrace that. I'm ready to move on, ready to try new things, ready to see what life has for me. So, but yeah, if you guys like that back to the past segment, uh, comment below, 
I don't mind doing more. Like I said, I don't mind doing more of these, but it's definitely something that, that I feel like a lot of you could connect with and a lot of you can connect with. I feel like it's something that's needed in the podcast world. I know a lot of people like to tell jokes and I'm, I'm all for that too. Last week we had a fun, we had a hell of a good time last week, silly little goose time, but you know, the stuff like this is important because I want to be able to, I want to be able to separate myself from different podcasters. I want to separate myself from what people like. There's a lot of copycats, bro. I don't want to be a copycat. So if you guys, if you guys enjoyed that segment, please let me know and I'll continue. I'll continue doing them. So, but yeah. Um, so earlier this week, I was seeing some news online about the the new Batman movie, right? And there's a there's a lot of rumors that Dick Grayson is going to be in the movie, and he will be around the ages of 13, 15. Now the biggest debate regarding Robin is that people just straight up don't think Robin should be in a live action Batman movie. They don't think it translates well to the uh, to the the big screen. I'm here to tell you, no, it does. Okay. Right. Kick-Ass was a very, very good example that Hit Girl, who was a fucking teenager, can translate well to the big screen. OK, now this is what I was talking about last week with the Nolan effect. If you're going off what Nolan and Matt Reeves are trying to do, like hyper realistic, there is no superpowers, there is no, you know, that type of stuff. Well, yeah, then a, a teenage Robin wouldn't work. Right. But I, I think if you do it correctly. You can 100% have Dick Grayson in the next Batman movie. Like, hands down. No debate. No no arguing. You can. You just got to make it good, bro. Right? Yes. When people say, oh, but it's not believable. He's a teenager fighting crime. Oh, because a man wearing a bat fucking costume is believable? An alien from, from the Midwest wearing spandex is believable? Wonder Woman is believable? I mean, come on, bro. When, when, when do we stop saying that stuff? It's a superhero movie. We just want to be entertained. We want to have a good time. Tell us a good story. Let us resonate with the characters. I'm so sick and tired of like every Batman incarnation has to be like super serious and they can't be Killer Croc. And you know, like I just, I don't, I don't understand where that came from. And I know where it came from. It came from the Nolan movies, which again, great trilogy, great movies. But come on, bro. If we if we continue to do the hyper realistic Batman, you're not gonna get Dick Grayson. You're not gonna get any Robins that are supposed to be of their age in the comic books, right? Like I I think a thirteen to fifteen year old Robin would be good. I mean, imagine in the new Batman movie, like you have a kid who watches the Batman on TV, okay, sees how he defeated the Riddler, and he's like, you know what, man, I. I'm pissed that my family just died. You can even do the whole, his family was still in the circus, you know, the the Flying Graysons. You could still do that. He could be like, hey, my family died. I'm angry. And I want to go out and start doing that. I feel like I can go out and fight crime. And he tries to copy what Batman does. And Batman has to deal with the ramifications of, hey, because these kids are seeing me do it, now they're going out and doing it. And he might try to stop Dick Grayson at first. He might try to stop Robin from doing it. But then he realizes, like, hey, I'm not going to be able to. He's actually pretty good at what he's doing. Let me put him under my wing. <laughs> His bat wing. But yeah, no, let him put let me put me let me put him under my wing. Let me train him and let me like mentor him. Right. That could be easily be a storyline. I don't understand how that's like too when people are like, it's not realistic. Well, it kind of is, bro. You know, that could they could easily do that with the Joker movie, too. Like, you know, somebody sees the Joker and is like, hey, I want to be the Joker. Like, I'm the real Joker. Oh, I can do what the Joker did. It's it's almost along the same lines. So to me, yes, you can do a realistic Robin movie. You can put Robin in a Batman movie. I don't think it's like once I saw Kick-Ass and Hit Girls in it, right? Because, yes, like. Kick-Ass didn't really have, like, superpowers, right? There was no, like, superpowers in that movie. But it it kind of reminded... And since Big Daddy kind of reminded me of Batman, it's like, yes, you see, you can do Robin. It doesn't have to be, like, everybody's like, but how would you have a kid in a movie? Well, do it good, and you can't. Okay? So you guys comment below. What do you think of Dick Grayson being in the new Batman, if the rumors are true? And... 
do you think it works? If you don't, I'm interested to hear what you have to say. Because if you don't, I'm actually like willing to hear people. But if you're going to use the whole, it's not realistic, like how would that make sense? Well, like none of this makes sense. <laughs> if you get what I'm saying, like none of it makes sense, right? And we don't have to continue only doing hyper-realistic Batman movies. That's why I'm glad James Gunn is doing Brave and the Bull because it's time to get something new in, okay? If we're going to repeat the same old thing, this is why the, the superhero genre will die. If you keep repeating the same thing and re repeating the same tropes, try something different, try something new, make a good story, and I think the fans will end up liking it. So, but yeah, the last topic for tonight, guys, it might be a little spoilerish, a lot of spoilers in here. So if you haven't seen Ahsoka or you're not caught up on Ahsoka, I would just, you know, come back later or fast forward this to the end when I do the outro. But I just saw episode four last night of Ahsoka. And yes, I'm kind of mind blown, bro. And I'm not necessarily going to say that it's the best Star Wars ever. But yeah, bro, it's pretty fucking good, bro. Like... I'm really excited for the world between worlds only because it looked good in live action. Okay. It looked fantastic. I don't understand how the de-aging tech is still making these people look like, like CGI ish. Like I wish they could fix that, but that's just a, that's just really small and nitpicky. It's not really a big deal. I'm actually, so the Ahsoka series is doing something that I'm actually really glad they're attempting. So let's, let's first, let's go to them going to another galaxy, right? That that concept alone is very fascinating because what does this new galaxy look like? Is it really different from the Star Wars galaxy? Does it look really different? Like I, that'd be cool if it was like really different. Like it looked different. Like everything. Like it was maybe it's more colorful. Maybe it's less colorful. Maybe there's like way more evil out there, and and that galaxy versus the Star Wars galaxy. Are the Yuuzhan Vong there? Or like what what is out there right and i think the concept of another galaxy has always been in star wars like you know in the extended universe so it's not really too far-fetched that they're doing this but it, it's it's very fascinating I, i'm really interested to see what they do with that like yes you know even if you don't do anything with the ahsoka show the fact that there's another galaxy out there with the potential of the yuzhan vong or a bigger threat coming into the star wars galaxy keep that that is fantastic. It's good storytelling because that's what they did in the EU, right? The Vong came from another galaxy and they almost wiped out ours, the Star Wars galaxy. So keep that. I'm very fascinated with that. Another thing, the the Night Sister magic, it looked good on screen. You know, it looked really good on screen. Give us more of like the weird, the 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 science fiction-y type stuff. That was great. Right? And also in the world between worlds, I'm really fascinated on how Ahsoka got there. How did Anakin get there? Is it just, is he a forced ghost? Is he an apparition? Is he a dark side apparition? Like what's going on with that, right? And the more that they do stuff like this, I feel like it's doing a service to George Lucas's Star Wars, right? And what I mean by that is there's always like this magical element to it. This like, this element that you never really got in any other movies like this like when you first learned about the force and like the, the, mis the mystery behind it and okay well these guys can move stuff with their hands and like they can fight with these lightsabers like that stuff was always really cool and at the end of the episode last night bro when anakin shows up and you see him at the end when ahsoka turns around what do you do hey dave filoni what do you do Hey, hey, Disney, not Disney. <laughs> they, you know, they're all about the money. But hey, Lucasfilm, what you do? Hey, Kathleen, get it. What you do? <laughs> hey, Dave Filoni, what you do? <laughs> oh, bro, when I tell you I teared up, when I tell you I had goosebumps, I can't even, I can't even explain it in ways that don't make me sound crazy. You know, I'm sitting there last night. I had some, I had a Pacifico. So obviously I was a little buzzed off Pacifico. And when Anakin showed up, on, you know, he said snips. She turns around. And then the Vader music plays afterwards. I was like, hey, 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 Dave Filoni. You do. You going to make me cry? You going to sit there and fucking make me cry? Is that what you're going to do? You going to sit there and show Anakin and make me cry? You going to fucking do cameos? Is that what we're doing? Is that Balin? Balin and Lord Balin? 
He's just going to be one of the best villains of all time. And he's just fucking, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, Ahsoka. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, speaking of uh, Lloyd Balin, bro, one of the best villains I've ever seen in Star Wars. His presence is is unmatched. The the Ray Stevenson, I'm so sad that he died because that, he, you know, he it looked like he put his all into that character, right? Like, that's crazy. The actress who plays Shin, I mean, people on Twitter are going, qu- are going crazy over her. Yeah, th- because she's fine as fuck and she looks like a badass villain too. So when you mix those two together, hey, hey no. <laughs> you got, you know, and Sabine too, like, bro, like when Sabine hands over the map, that's not really out of character for her. She wants to see Ezra, bro. You know, the guy played it. The guy played it smart, dude. He wasn't like forcing it out of her hand. He like, he did it in a way where, yes, he still wins, but he wins because you decide that he wins, not him taking it from you like a normal bad guy. Like, that's why I think Lord Balin, bro, bravo, dude, bravo. And then, again, rest in peace to Ray Stevenson because obviously he's not, I mean, do they recast? Do they recast Lord Balin? I mean, bro, I would. If he if he doesn't end up uh if his character doesn't die by the end of the show, I think he would want that too, bro. I mean, I think if you ask a lot of actors, they would want their character to like live on. But with this one, in the most respectful way I can say this, he plays Lord Balin so good, you probably don't recast, bro. I mean, how do you how would you get another actor to do it that good? And I don't think you could. There's some there's some cases where I say recast. Like Black Panther, I say recast T'Challa, right? I I think they even should have recasted Leia, for for like different projects, right? But for this, I say recast, but I'm totally with it if they don't, because how do you recast that? How do you how do you live up to like Ray Stevenson's performance? I don't think you could. So you know, even if they if they don't recast, I won't be mad. And if they do, like, hey, the character is so good, I I would I wouldn't be surprised. So, but yeah, uh, with Ahsoka, I'm really, really hoping that this kind of mends the fan base because the fan base is broken, bro. There's a, there's, it's so divided and it's more divided than ever. I mean, before the force awakens, the fan base was like all to mainly all together. We were all hell excited. Then the last Jedi just changed everything. And for people who, who kind of don't agree with that, like you're kind of lying to yourself. If you say the last Jedi didn't change everything, it did. It really changed everything for us because everybody started beefing after that. There was a lot of uh, turmoil in the fan base. And like, it, and everything after that just kept dividing the fans more and more. So the main thing for Star Wars going forward is hire writers and directors who know about Star Wars, who know about the lore, who love Star Wars, and it will translate to the screen. Okay, if you can, t- if you guys continue hiring people who don't know shit about Star Wars, who don't know about the lore, and are just there because it's an opportunity, bye, bye, people who want an opportunity, <laughs> uh, bye. <laughs> so that's my opinion on it, and yeah, you guys comment below. Uh, have you guys seen Ahsoka? If you have, let's talk some Star Wars, bro. So. But yeah, that is episode 126. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, Last week, we did pretty good on Instagram and TikTok. As usual, uh, thank you guys for supporting the audio platforms. And if you want to see me do Back to the Past more, please comment below because I I have stories out the the wazoo. A lot of them funny, a lot of them sad, but it all all connects to a bigger message. So yeah, I'm Melo15. And until next time, guys, peace.